So what are we going to do this afternoon? In your telematics booklet that you got, there is a, a, an exam paper and I have selected questions from paper two. And the questions that we're going to do is a statistics question. I'm going to do a circle question from analytical geometry. And the rest of the time that is available, I want to do trigonometry because that is the section that everybody seem to be battling with. So everybody calculators on, have your pencils, have your rulers, have everything ready because we are about to start. And the first question that we are going to start with is question number three. Everybody have your calculators ready. And it says, the following percentages represent the maths results of 10 grade 12 learners. So I have here the percentages of 10 grade 12 learners, 43, 70 and so on. And the very first question says that you must calculate the average percentage. So can we take the sharp calculator first? And if I go and I take the average percentage, everybody knows that you're only going to take the 10 um, values you're going to add it together and divide by 10. So you are going to go 43 plus 70, work with me students, 55 plus 60 plus 85 plus 92 plus 65. You can see the values on your screen there, 92 plus 65 plus 62 plus 75 plus 58 and you are going to get a total value of 665. When I work this out I got 665. Welcome to Sarepta as well and now we want to work out the average percentage so what you're going to say is your 665 divided by 10 which gives you an average grade 12 of 66 comma 5. Your 10 scores there again on the screen. So the average percentage that we got, everybody added up those values. You have it in your um, question paper. The average percentage is 66 comma 5, which is quite a good average percentage to have for 10 students. Now they say determine the standard deviation. Now grade 12's Everybody who has the sharp calculator, take that out and then I'm going to explain how to do standard deviation on the sharp calculator. And after that, everybody with the Casio calculator, I'm going to explain this to you. Students, you need to sit with your pens, with your pencils to take down the steps. I'm going to show first how to do standard deviation on the sharp calculator because we still have a lot of students who, who's making use of this calculator. So everybody, here we go. The first step is to press mode. Okay, now you're going to see that there is normal and there's stat, but we are doing statistics, so you press one. Then you see SD, which means standard deviation, and the zero is flickering, so you press zero. Did you all get that? On your screen, you should now have stat naught. Now you're going to key in your values. Can you all see the values on the screen there? The first value is 43. So I say 43 and you put it into your memory. So you say memory plus M plus. Then you key in 70 and you say M plus again. Then you key in 55, you say M plus, 60, you are all doing this with me, don't just watch, do it. So you get 60 and you say M plus, everybody works with me, 85, M plus, 92, M plus, remember when you're saying M plus, you are putting it into your memory, 65, M plus, 62, M plus, 75, M plus, it should now say data set 9, which means you've got one data still to key in, which is 58, and you say M plus. Now you've keyed in all your data grade 12s, and what you're going to do now, the only thing that you press on this calculator is the alpha button. Everybody presses the alpha button, and then you go to alpha 6, because that is standard deviation. Press 6, 
and then equals. So you should have on your screen that the standard deviation is 13,77. Remember the symbol for standard deviation is a symbol looking like that and like that. That is the symbol for standard deviation. Look at that. So that is why I pressed alpha 6. Now for all the students who are making use of the Casio calculator. The majority of students are using this calculator now, but I just did the sharp calculator for the students who still have the sharp calculator. So all Casio calculators are out. You are sitting, you're not talking to your friends. You are sitting and looking at the steps. Okay, I'm switching my calculator on. My calculator is in normal mode and I press mode setup and it says one comp, two stat, three table. What do you want? You want to go into stat mode, so you press two. Now there's so many numbers coming on your screen, but you see if you press one, it says VAR, which is variance. So you want to get variance. Remember variance is the square of your standard deviation. So everybody, I am going to press one. On your screen, you should now have a table. Okay, so everybody put the values into your table now. On the screen, there's the values. I've got 43. So you say 43. Now, in the shop, we said memory plus. But on the Casio, you just press is equal to. Can you see? Now, key in the 70 and press is equal to. Every time that you put in a value on the Casio, you press is equal to. Every time that you put a value on the shop, you say memory plus. So I have now keyed in 43. I've keyed in 70. I'm now going to key in 55. What must I press? Equal to. Then I'm going to key in 60. Equal to. Then I'm going to key in 85 equal to 92 equal to don't miss one 65 equal to 62 equal to 75 equal to and i've got one more data to key in one more number which is 58 equal to now you have keyed in all 10 values you can see that the 58 is opposite the 10 so now you know you didn't skip one. Now what do you do after this? You clear your screen. Remember we didn't do it on the sharp calculator. We only on the sharp calculator pressed alpha 6. But in the Casio calculator you first need to clear your screen. How do you do that? You press AC. It's on the orange button. So everybody with the Casio calculators press AC with me i press ac can you see your screen is now completely cleared okay so everybody did that i'm going to wait for you after that you press shift so put your hand on shift as well i press shift then you see it says stat on number one and you press one now look on your screen now what do you see one is type two is data Three, sum, four is variance. Everybody has different numbers, but just look for VAR. VAR on my Casio calculator says four, so I will press four. Check what it says on your calculators. VAR on my one, I press four. Okay, and then I know that this is the symbol for standard deviation, so I look and I look and I look and I see that mine is... It says then on this one it's X and then something looking like that. Remember, or it can have that in front, or it can have this. You look for that symbol. I'm waiting for everybody to look for that symbol. On my calculator, I must now press three, and I've got my standard deviation. And I say is equal to, and I get exactly the same value like I got on my shop. 
on the sharp I got 13,778. So if you round that off correct to two decimal places, it's going to be 13,78. Can you see on your Casio, it's also 13,78. And that is your standard deviation. Can everybody see if I do it correct to two decimal places? It's 13,78. Welcome to Belleville South, Sinun Yongo High School, Mannenberg High School. Welcome everybody. I'm Eleanor Splinter and I want you to understand the standard deviation because we know they're going to ask it again. So we got our average percentage which is 66,5. We got our standard deviation which was 13,75. I hope you all worked with me. And now we come to the very popular question. And the question says, determine the percentage of learners that lie within one standard deviation from the mean. How many learners lie within? Remember, it says within one standard deviation. So what you're going to do is you are going to take Listen very carefully. Your mean, which we worked out, remember your mean is your average. Another name for average is mean. So what was my mean? 66,5 and you're going to add one standard deviation. Now when I added that and I worked that out, I got 80,27. That is the average or the mean plus one standard deviation and you are going to take the average minus one standard deviation. And that gave me 52 comma, can we just going to look here, go back to normal mode, it's 66.5 plus 13.78 which gives me 80 comma Remember, it's now correct to two decimal places. And if I have 66.5 minus 13.78, I get 52,72. What was the question now again? Determine the percentage of learners that lie within one standard deviation from the mean. So what you do is you take your mean plus your standard deviation and your mean minus your standard deviation. Now grade 12s, you go and you look how many learners fell within these two values. I am working between the values of 52,72 to 80,28. Okay, now count with me. Look at this. I am working between 52,72 and 80,28. Okay, now, does the 43 fall in that range? No. Does the 70 fall within that range? Yes. Does the 55 fall in that range? Yes. Does the 60 fall in that range? Yes. Does the 85 fall? No, it is to be. Remember the top part was 80, 28. So this one doesn't. Does 92 fall in? No, it's too big. 65? Absolutely. 62? Absolutely. 75? Does it fall in the range? Yes. And 58? Yes. Now you count how many ticks do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 learners fall within this range. So it's 7 learners. They want the percentage. So how many learners did I have? I had 10. If I want the percentage, everybody knows we times by 100. And that gives you 70% of learners fall within one standard deviation. How did I get this value now again? I said my average or my mean minus my standard deviation. And this value was your, your average plus your standard deviation. Okay. I see there are lots of schools logged in. I see there are lots of students logged in. Remember that you can't just sit. It's paper two. You need to work with me. I'm going to try and go very, very slowly so that you can understand and you can SMS your questions through to me because I really, really want you to have a good paper two. Now that was the statistics question that I 
took from your question paper. What did we do? Standard deviation. We did mean and we did how many learners fall within one standard deviation. 